All right, let's get the show on the road. Hello, everyone. Hope you're well. Welcome to another edition of Math 1108. Um, so you guys just met your coaches. That is awesome. I think they're a great bunch, to be honest. Uh, uh, I met with all of I met with all of them except Michael um, last week at some point, and Michael had to be absent from that meeting, so I did I had no idea he was one of the coaches. Uh, so yeah, like he showed up in my class this morning earlier at the 8.30 class. I'm like, what? It's Michael. <laughs> yeah, so that was a, a very nice surprise. Um, so yeah, he, he has Javon experience. Like he, he was in my class the whole time. So um, he can speak to my pet peeves and things of that sort. That being said, uh, we are going to continue. We have to learn how to count today. So uh, we are going to do that. So let me pull that up on the screen here. Let's make sure I can see the chat. Okay, so before we get into counting, very quick recap. Uh, we went over some general counting principles last time, kind of came under three umbrellas. There's the multiplication rule. Uh, hold on. Okay. Uh, there is the multiplication rule, um, which basically tells you if you're building an experiment with several stages and you know how many ways each stage can happen, then the total number of ways that that possible that in overall experiment can happen is just multiplying the number of possibilities for each stage, right? called a multiplication rule. Um, if each stage has the same uh, number of possibilities, then it looks like B. Um, but if they have different possibilities, it looks like A. But it's the same principle. You just multiply all things. So if you have R stages, you would multiply the R number of ways that each stage can happen. If each stage can happen in N ways, then you would get N to the R as a consequence. Right? You can also think of this as a way to generate uh, tuples without uh, a repetition uh, restriction, right? So free reign. Um, so formula A would come in if each coordinate of your tuple, you, could, you would pick an element from a different set. Uh, formula B would come from uh, each coordinate in your tuple, you're picking an element from the same set, right? So that can be um, how you can do it. Um, then we looked at counting with restriction now because uh, up here it can really work in a free for all situation. Uh, so we do need to know how to work with restrictions. And uh, just to kind of make this a little bit more specific, I did write this down, but I, I want to put it up here um, where order matters, repetition not allowed. So uh, you are putting, uh, you want to choose R objects from N objects in a particular order, or you want to choose R objects from N objects and then arrange them in a particular order. You have what is called a permutation. That is PNR, that's this number over here. Now, if you want to take all the objects that you see and arrange them in some order, this gives rise to what we call a factorial. This is this guy over here. Um, and so uh, zero factorial is one, we saw that last time. So this is just how you choose things in a certain order from a set of things. Um, and this is also a way that you can take tuples uh, without repeating anything in the coordinates. Uh, then we wanted to look at the case where order does not matter, right? And again, repetition is not allowed. Um, this led to what we call a combination. Um, so that's the, what the object is called. But everyone, if they're reading it on a piece of paper or something like that, they would read the phrase n choose r, right? So 25 choose 3, or 15 choose 12, or something like that, 
right? You, 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 all, you have to always have the first number greater than or equal to the last number, okay? So uh, yeah, and that is like n choose r, it's written like in that parentheses notation that you have up here. And that's called a combination. This is the number of ways you can choose r objects from n objects in no particular order. You don't care about putting them in order. In general, the combination is going to give you a smaller number than the permutation. Because the, for the permutation, when you pick a set of things, each different rearrangement counts as a new thing, right? Whereas with combinations, it doesn't. So you would always have more permutations than combinations. That led us to this here, where I said, in general, you can mix and match these techniques. However, be very careful when mixing permutations and combinations. Chances are they won't work well together. The values you will get from a permutation will be larger than the corresponding values from combinations, and that can cause you to mess up certain things. Um, so yeah, so be careful with mixing and matches. Usually, you can mix the multiplication rule with one of the others, and it, as long as you set it up, properly in your head, it shouldn't be a big deal. Um, did some examples of us calculating them, make sure you can do it in your calculator. Also showed you how to do it on Wolfram. I put some screenshots in here. And then we went to the counting examples where I did the hardest ones, the most difficult. <sighs> like I'm still uh, kind of sweating from how much work I did here. Uh, but then I left you guys to do some stuff. So that's where we are now. And in the last class, I got through everything except problem eight. So I'm going to also just do everything except problem eight. Not that I could get through problem eight in the remaining time anyway, but um, uh, it is going to take uh, a while. So not because the problems take long, but because me explaining how to do the problems will take long. Uh, So this is definitely going to be one of those try this for next time things. Um, yeah. And as an overarching idea, I'm going to use blue numbers to count choices specifically. Because I don't want to have to write out the word choices every time. Like, oh, four choices, five choices, six choices. Like, if it's a blue number in this lecture, it's a choice, right? Um, it's, it's counting the number of options you have. OK. Uh, so group one, really quickly, what is your guess here? I don't know if it's right, but I got yeah. one, one times 10 to the ninth. Okay. Um, so how do we do that? So um, we're building a 10 digit phone number. And so to visualize that we can think of this as 10 slots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, And we know that the first digit has to be a one. So we know that there is a one here, put that in quotes, has to be a one to start with. So really there's only one choice here, right? Now for all the others, we, we weren't given any restrictions. So there can be 10 choices here, 10 choices here, 10 choices here, 10 choices here, all the way down to 10 choices there. So then, uh, by multiplication rule, uh, you would get uh, 1 times 10 to the 9, or just 10 to the 9 possible uh, phone numbers. OK, so yeah. So that is, uh, that is correcto mundo. Okay, so let's move on.
Group two, problem five. What is your guess here? And it, it's, it's going to be a very tight fit. So um, if you could respond quickly, that would be much appreciated. Including, I'm, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what to do. Right. Like that's, that's also a response. In case you guys didn't know, um, I would much rather you say, oh, I don't know what to do, as opposed to silence. Um, uh, I guess for future reference. <laughs> um, so, okay. Uh, is is anyone who does not know what to do would come up with a guess, any idea what to do? Like, what direction would you think in? What would you go in? What do you, what would you what would you think might be a good idea, based on what we've been doing? Any, any idea of how we could start? Like, give me an idea of how to start. Like, what, what would I, what would I do? Would you maybe use the multiplication rule? Okay, how, how, where, when, how, yeah. How, how what, would, what would I multiply? How would I, how would I know what to multiply? I think that's where I'm kind of confused, but would you maybe multiply like all the, all the, uh, different pieces of clothing that you have? Sure. I'm uh, not too sure. So, so like three, four, two, and four. Uh, yes. Yeah, something like that. Right. So if I were to do that, multiply three, four, two, and four, what would that count? It does count something, but what, what specifically would it count here? If I multiplied all the numbers. Would that just be like the total number of clothes that you have? Or no? No, um, it's the total number of outfits, right? So it's shirts, pants, jackets, and ties, right? And when I do the multiplication rule, I'm really counting how many combinations of shirts, pants, jackets, and ties I can do, right? So if I multiplied all of them, that's what I would do. Now, the question is, do you want to multiply all of them? Do you want all of them? Because if you read the question, the dress code requires, there are, there are multiple things that you could do and obey the dress code, right? You can wear a shirt, pants, and a jacket, or you can wear a shirt, pants, and a tie, or you can wear a shirt, pants, jacket, and tie. What you just told me Three, four, two, four, multiplying those all together. What, which situation do you think those count? That would count the uh, shirt, pants, tie. And Three jacket. times four times two times four. Yeah, it counts like everything, right? Yeah. So that, that would count the very last situation, right? But there, there are three possible situations. So what would you do for the others? Uh, multiply, uh, would you do for the shirt, pants, and jacket, just multiply the three shirts times the four pants times the two jackets, and then, yeah. for, and then for the pants and jacket and tie, just the four pants times the two jackets times the four ties. I'm, so just exclude, yeah, yeah, exclude yeah, so one you, thing in each. Right. Uh, now, so you'll get a bunch of these numbers. What would you do with them after? Right, so uh, let's talk about uh, possible outfits experiments. So one is I can have shirt, pants, 
or jacket. Two, or I can have shirt, pants, tie, or three, I can have shirt, pants, jacket, tie. Okay. And so now you just multiply uh, each one, right? Um, um, I'm trying to view the questions on another screen here. So I don't have to keep scrolling up and down on this screen. Um, okay. So yeah, as you mentioned here, you would uh, choose the choices. So for shirts, we had three choices. For pants, we had four choices. For jackets, we have two choices, right? So this would be, you know, three times four times two. And that's uh, 24, 12 times two. You move down to shirt, pants, and tie. That would be three, four, and four. That's three times four times four. So that's 12 times four, that's 48 possible uh, outfits here. Move down here, you'd have uh, three, four, two jackets, four ties. So that would be three, four, two, four equals 96, I think. Okay, so yeah, we got all these numbers. We got the 24, the 48, the 96. So what do we do with them? What do you guys think? What should we do with these numbers? Do we multiply these numbers? The 24, the 48, and 96? Do you perm, uh, permutate them somehow? Uh, permutate means to rearrange. Oh, okay, never mind. I mean, if you did it in the if you if you did a rearrangement, it wouldn't really make a difference. Um, so, and this is something that's going to come up, but that or is the important word. Or, or you'll notice that this was in the question. You can have this or that or that or that. Uh, more specifically, this is an exclusive or, which means we cannot consider these situations to overlap, right? So for example, if I were to overlap one and situation one and two, what I'd really get is situation three, which is not anything new, right? So none of these overlap. I can have this way of satisfying the requirement or that way or that way. I have to only have one of these ways. Right, so they don't overlap. These guys are all exclusive. If you fulfill the requirement by way one and way two, it's not. It just means you fulfilled it by way three. Right, it, it, you can't if you if you combine them, you just get one of the others. Um, so it's an exclusive or, and this often translates mathematically to add. Right, and uh, uh, in, in independent cases, we'll translate to multiply. That's what the multiplication rule is actually, uh, because we have shirt and pants and a jacket, we multiply them. However, when we have or, we would add them, provided that there's no overlap, and here there aren't. So what we would actually do with these numbers is we would add them. So the answer to add the above. Um, so that's going to be uh, 24 plus 48 plus 96. And that will be 168. So 168 is the answer. 
168 total possible outfits obey the dress code. Okay, so we've now introduced a new concept and it is one I'll be talking about again, um, but the idea that and goes with multiply in a very specific scenario and that or goes with addition in a very specific scenario I do want you to get that it's because this is an exclusive or why it translates to add. Um, I wouldn't consider or being add all the time. Right? So very, pay, paying attention to detail, very important, very important in math class. Um, so yeah, that was the number of ways to get that. 168 possible ways to create an outfit that fits the dress code. Uh, group one, did you get uh, anything for this? Um, we split up the work and Colin did this one and she's not here. Oh, okay. Uh, did you guys uh, otherwise think about it? Or no, no, like, like we're, we're trusting you, <laughs> Colin. <laughs> This is all you Wait, babe. Hold on, I think I can do it. It's a <laughs> okay. combination, right? Uh how? So what what do you what would you what do you want to do? Um, Talk me through it. What would you do? Okay. If I were to read those three digit numbers. Yeah, three digit numbers, it can go from zero 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 to nine nine nine. How many of these numbers can you create? where exactly one number is greater than five. Wait, exactly one digit? Exactly one, yeah. So one of the three digits is greater than five. All the others are less than or equal to five. How many ways could you do that? So I would do like the same counting thing that you had just done before where we're limited to. Okay, so. Um, being greater than five. Okay, so how would you set it up? So there are the three slots for the three digits. How do we fill them? How do we choose how many choices we have? So only one of them has to be greater than five, right? Yeah, exactly one. Okay, does it matter which one? Like if you just put like the first one has to be greater than five and then all the other ones there's... Okay, so greater than five. And then you want these ones to be less than or equal to five and less than or equal to five? Yes. Okay. Uh, how many choices do we have for greater than five? Four, correct? Four, yeah. How many do we have for less than or equal to five? Five. Well, no, less than, less than or equal to five. Five is included. Six. So you'd have six, because they're 10 digits total, right? And these two guys are opposites. So if four of them is one way, then it has to be six of them is the other way, right? So it's zero, one, two, three, four, or five. Those are six numbers. Uh, the numbers greater than five would be six, seven, eight, nine. Um, so there are six here, six here. So the multiplication rule tells us that this would be four, six, six, which um, I think I calculated that earlier, uh, 144. So is that it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, not quite. Um, is it possible that you're missing something else? So there, there are cases here. How many cases would there be? Anyone have any idea how many cases? Is it three? Three, yes.
what are the three? Uh, what what did you think about those three cases? What were they? Um, that the greater than five is in the first um, digit or the second digit or the third. Digit. Right. First digit is greater than five, all the others. Or you can have the second digit greater than five. That's a different number, right? Or you can have the third digit greater than five. So here, uh, this guy's gonna be greater than five. These two are less than or equal to five. That would give you a different number. There are four choices here, six choices there. Um, the third digit greater than five. So this is the guy that's greater than five. These two are less than or equal to five. So there are six choices here, six choices here, four choices there. So uh, we would have here, six, four, six, 144. Here we would have six, six, four, 144. All right, what do we do with these numbers here? The 144s. Um, because it's or, is it an exclusive or where you add it? Right, because you can have greater than five in the first digit and in the second digit, right? Because then you'd have the greater than five in two places. And we know that we want the greater than five in one place. So none of these guys overlap, which means or means we're going to add them. So for the answer, add since cases don't overlap. So you're gonna take the 144 plus the 144 plus the 144, and that's going to give you uh, 432, I believe, possible three digit numbers. of this type, right? So sometimes you don't know how to start, just kind of picturing it in your head is a good thing, right? So once I drew the stages and I labeled what each one was, then you kind of realize, oh yeah, the greater than five is in the first position. I suppose it could be in the second or the third, right? You'll kind of see it once you start drawing it out. Um, and so that's, that's why this whole thing of writing slots when you're making decisions uh, thinking of stages in an experiment, very nice. One thing you may have noticed here is all these numbers are very similar. Um, it might hint to you that there was another way to do this. Uh, and there is. So let me actually talk about that. Another way. So this is the basic brute force way, um, of course, on a test or uh, where I want you to show your work, I would expect to see something like this. Um, another possibility uh, is to do something shorter. Um, however, it's probably a little bit more sophisticated than this solution here. However, it is definitely a kind of solution that I would expect you guys to know, because as you'll see in the future, um, this kind of uh, way of solving a problem is going to be very useful and make things a lot nicer. Um, so another way, would be to consider just uh, one experiment to rule them all. Right? Lord of the Rings reference. Uh, you guys are probably too young to know what that is. All right, so uh, how would you, if you had to construct it all at once, how would you go about doing it? Well. What you would do here is you can think of an experiment in three different stages. One thing I can do is, as you said, the, the greater than five number can come up in any of three positions. So what I can do is I can choose, choose the position 
for the number greater than five. There will be three such choices, first position, second position, or third position. Then what I could do is then choose what digit I put in that place. And of that, I would have four choices. Then what I'm going to do is choose the other two numbers. Now that I know is multiplication rule. I want to choose one number and then a second number. This falls by multiplication rule. So you'd realize that this ends up giving you, well, three times four times six times six, and it's also 432. Okay. So sometimes you can uh, break it down into a very specific stage, but then sometimes you wanna get a little meta with it and you want your stages to be more conceptual. Like I'm, here's the kind of choice I would have to make. And here's another kind of choice I would have to make. Here's another kind of choice I would have to make. And then you count all those choices and then you have to do the multiplication rule. Um, so here we didn't really have to worry about the addition. It was, the addition is taken care of in this way. Um, but yeah, uh, because each stage was very similar, they all gave me four times six times six. It could be done in this way uh, relatively easily. So either way of writing out the solution would be fine. Um, I wouldn't worry, about, in general, I wouldn't worry about trying to do the most sophisticated solution, trying to impress anybody. Uh, at the end of the day, you're in a test, time is of the essence. Um, I would just jump into the quickest strategy that you know of and just do it. This is true in life and in business. Uh, an okay decision made quickly is better than a perfect decision made too late. Uh, this is always true. So don't just try to be like, oh, I want to know the most sophisticated way to do this problem. It doesn't matter. If you see a way it's right, just do it and move on, right? Just pull the trigger. Um, I will, of course, tell you when certain decisions would be more appropriate than others and recommend make recommendations whenever they apply. Um, but really, either of these would be fine for me. Like, I don't, I don't really particularly find one way better than the other. Um, now, hopefully you guys know about cards a little bit. Um, and we don't have much time, so I'm not gonna bother group two about this. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of go through this with you guys. So cards, <laughs> things that you see people shuffling. Uh, so they have things called kinds or values. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, or king. Um, and these guys have four different suits uh, as they're called. This is hearts or spades or clubs or diamonds. So you can have an ace of hearts, an ace of spades, an ace of clubs, an ace of diamonds. So for each of these numbers that I just listed here, the ace, two, three, all the way up to king, there are four different kinds, four different suits, I should say, because kind actually has a very special meaning here. Four different suits for each of these guys. So you have 13 things, each of them have four different uh, variations. You have 52 things. So there is, uh, there are, it's here, 52 cards in a standard size deck, right? Um, we don't count the joker, so there are 52 cards, right? Now we're gonna talk about five card poker, right? You don't need to know about five card poker. Everything you need to know is in this problem. Uh, but um, fun fact, and I put it here, probability really came about uh, by people thinking through gambling situations, believe it or not. This is where the mathematics of probability came from. Um, back in the day, gambling was a very, very common pastime and people wagered a lot of money. Uh, people would bet their entire estates. Uh, they wanted to know when they were making a smart bet. They wanted to know what are the chances that I can actually beat this guy, that he actually has uh, a card hand better than the one I have. So they would go to the mathematicians and be like, how do I beat this game? And math people would come up with probability techniques to determine here's how you would know, or here's how you would wager 
right? Based on how much, how likely is it that this other person can beat you with uh, something that they're about to do that you can't predict in the future, right? So that's where probability came about. So you'll find that if any of you have had probability classes before, you'll notice that a lot of examples come from cards or throwing dice or flipping coins or doing all these other things. It might be wondering why are these examples all kind of like this, the silly like playing games example. It's because like that's how probability came about. You really get to sophisticated uh, situations that you would care about in the real world in much higher level probability classes. Here we keep it basic a lot of the times when we talk about games. So uh, we wanna know how to get five cards. The important thing to know about card hands is it does not matter the order. Order, uh, oh, come on, iPad. Order does not matter here. If you have a bunch of cards in your hand and you rearrange them in your hand, you have the same cards. You have the same uh, ability to win or lose a game. The order does not matter. So that means you're choosing without order. That means you should think combinations. So there are 52 possible cards. You wanna pick five of them. The dealer is gonna pick five cards to give you. How many ways can he do that? Well, 52 choose five, obviously. Uh, and this is, uh, this is 52 choose five. So the dealer out of 52 cards is gonna choose five of them to give you. Uh, this actually works out to uh, 2,598,960. Yeah. That's how many possible card hands you can get. Now, uh, let me introduce you to a very specific card hand. There's something called a full house. Uh, this is when you have two cards of a kind and three cards of another kind. The two cards are called the parents, yeah. you know, like mommy and daddy and the three cards are the children. And when we have this, we say we have a full house. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna find out how many possible full houses are there? How many ways can you get a full house, right? So in this problem, I would use much more of the kind of uh, meta thing that I wanna do here. So that leads us to kind of figuring out what would have to happen to get a full house. What are the kinds of choices that I would have to make? Well, one way to do this, um, is to think of it as an experiment with, uh, many stages, uh, not many, I think it's like four stages. Uh, so, um, the experiment will involve you getting five cards but you have to end up, uh, uh, you have to end up, choose the parents. And here you choose the children. And now you start to think, well, what would go into me choosing the uh, parents versus the children, right? So, I mean, let's, let's do an example here. Example, uh, I can have a three, a three, then a queen, a queen, and a queen, right? That's an example of a full house, right? So yeah, what would that mean, right? Maybe I should move this over to the side. Well, it would mean here, I have to choose the kind for the parents. Example three, then choose the particular suits. Similarly here, you're going to choose the kind for the parents.
example, choosing queen, then uh, choose the particular suits. And so now what you can do is you realize that this comes into stages for the parents. Choose kind. Uh, choose uh, suits. Right? Um, so example, choose three. And over here is example, choose the three of hearts and choose the three of diamonds specifically, right? So how many ways can you do this? Well, there are 13 kinds, you wanna pick one. So there's 13, choose one, don't care about the order. And there are four suits. So out of four, I wanna choose two to pick, right? Um, similarly here, and notice that I have to choose a different kind for the parents, right? They can't be the same. I can't choose three again. I don't even have five threes. So here, choose a different kind. For children. Uh, example, queen. Then choose suits for the children. Example, you can get the queen of hearts. She's my queen. Jon Snow reference. Queen of clubs, queen of spades. Um, Jon Snow knows nothing, so we're not going to ask him for any advice here. But the idea is there will be 12 kinds left over for you to choose. You want to choose one of them. And then from the four cards in that kind, you're going to choose three of them to create the parents, to create the children. Um, and so by multiplication rule, uh, you are going to get 13, choose one times four, choose two, times 12, choose one, times four, choose three. And that gives us three, seven, four, four. Total full houses. Yeah. Um, just a minute for a quick follow-up. Um, what is the probability of getting a full house? Well, the probability of full house This is the number of ways to get full houses. Divided by the total number of possible hands. Based on what I told you about probability during our probability teasers class. So ultimately this would become 13 choose one, uh, four choose two, 12 choose one, four choose three, over 52 choose five. That ends up being three, seven, four, four, divided by two, five, nine, eight, uh, 960. This works out to roughly 0.14% or 0.0014. In other words, if you play poker 10,000 times, roughly 14 of those times would you have a full house. So yeah, you play poker with any that kid in your dorm, he gets a full house twice a night, every night, playing seven nights a week, something's up, right? Like it's not, 
uh, it's not going to happen, right? So, yeah, um, very small probability. And this is how poker hands are arranged, right? The smaller the probability of you getting that hand, the higher that hand is worth. So why does one poker hand beat another? Well, because the probability of getting it is smaller, right? And if you know those probabilities, it actually makes you better at poker. So, of course, there's the game between people, you know, trying to see someone's tail or talk about it. But at the end of the day, when you put your cards down on the table, that's what synchronizes it, right? And you want to know what is the chances that someone can beat me, right? And probability would be the math we use to determine those chances. So we'll end right there. Uh, try this for next time. We'll pick up with that tomorrow. And we'll actually start talking about probability specifically. Um, but uh, that's it for now. Uh, hope you like your coaches you met today. I like them all. I think they're a great bunch. I think it's going to be a great semester. This is going to be a fun time and very informative and very helpful. Um, not only for what you guys have to do as business majors in Gabelli, but in general, right? So with that, I will let you guys go. Uh, I know we're a little bit over time. Thank you for your time and attention, and I will see you guys in the next one. Ciao.